Hey guys, welcome back to Gaslands TV. Today I'll be doing this fire truck. I got this off Amazon and uh, I'm gonna jump right in it. Uh, this was pretty cool. It's actually a screw, so I don't have to uh, use my drill to remove that. This window here was kind of annoying to take out, but I finally got it out and uh, I don't think I'll be using that. Uh, now for inside, I'm gonna be using my drywall sanding paper which has been pretty useful for me there's other methods of uh, making a grid for the window but i like to use that now i'm going to use a gift certificate card here that i got for kellogg's something was was not right with uh, a box of kellogg's i bought so they sent me a gift card i'm going to use that for uh, the window in the front here make like an armored front with a hole in the front to make a hole it's really easy all you got to do is make two slits cut out that piece and then the piece that you cut out just re-glue it on the side there and it's going to make like a hole nice glove i know i mean as long as my fingertips are okay so uh, there you go I glued that it's going to make a nice little window there maybe you have a gun sticking out of it or something and uh, for the inside, I'm going to put the sandpaper here. Uh, I think I'm going to put all of these guns, which um, which come in the container that we're selling on Etsy, if you're interested. And I'm going to probably try to put the mini gun through this hole here. Make it stick out from the front of the car. What I like about this is that if if I don't do the gun to anything, I could actually like move it around. So I'll be able to move it around on the battlefield. I also added the metal bit on top there. And underneath, I'm going to add these skulls ram. And uh, the side over here, the side, I'm going to put one of the double machine guns. Glue that there. And uh, on top, I'm probably going to put this missile launcher. And on the side here, I'll put this electrical gun or EMP gun. Not sure what that is. Put some pipes in the back here. The, the back of this car is like really basic and empty. Maybe the designer got lazy and just stopped putting anything there. So we're going to have to add something there. Maybe a spare tire in the back with some pipes and I'm gonna glue that. See how that looks. It's not bad, I guess. I'm gonna go prime it in white and uh, start the paint job. I might actually glue some some of these things that I bought. Uh, it was on a previous video that I made on stuff that I bought. So if you wanna go check that out, um, I think this is pretty cool for hubcaps or armor on your mags maybe that's too big for this one uh, but it could be fun then there's these things here and these could be used for armor if you want to add some armor somewhere on your car a bit more gas landy and then there's these little things here that you know maybe a piece of metal you found on the floor and you want it to protect your mags or your tires so I think I'm going to glue a few of these, not on all the wheels, you know, maybe, maybe you just found three. So we'll put three there. Now for the body, I want to do a gradient from yellow to orange to red, since this is a fire truck and uh, it's going to be spewing some, some flamethrowers and some molotovs. So yeah, I'm going to try to make this thing look like, like fire. So what I'm going to do is start the front with yellow. Put some yellow. It's hard to do a gradient with yellow. I mean, it's just a bright yellow. It's hard to make like a light yellow. Uh, darker colors are easier to do a gradient with. Now in the middle, I want it to be orange. So I'm going to put some orange here without going all the way to the yellow. And then I'll show you how I did the gradient into the yellow. 
Now here I did a mistake. I kind of did a, a line straight down and that's going to show if, if you don't do a lot of coats. So maybe you want to like just brush it up a little bit. Don't make any hard edges. Now once, once you have less paint on your brush, you could just brush a little bit over the yellow here. Up, up to wherever you want the fade to, to show and start. It might take a few coats to get it right. Again, this is without airbrushing, so it's, it's harder. But uh, let's go slowly and, and don't put too much of the color so that you can actually blend the other color in after. So that's looking pretty good. I'll do the other side. And if, if you're not happy with what you're doing, you could just go a little bit further into the other color so that the gradient um, shows more. So here I'm putting my second coat. You can see a bit of the gradient there. And in the back, I'm going to put a light, light orange, because I know that there's going to be red going on top of that. And I'm going to come back and fix the, uh, the orange and yellow later on. Right now, I just want everything to dry up. So while that's drying up, I'm going to start the red in the back here. I'm trying metallic red. See how it looks. Even though the other two colors aren't metallic, I just wanted to see what kind of look I'm going to get here with this metallic red. And I'll probably put a regular red all the way in the back, like just a back bumper to make the red gradient pop even more. So now here with the red, I'm going to go back and touch the orange. And again, there's not a lot of paint here on the brush, so gradient's going to be pretty good. I'm going to do another coat of that shiny red back here. Try to blend that in. And then when, while that's drying, I'm going to come back in the front here and try to adjust this orange and yellow here. It's not bad. Now I think in the back here I'm going to use this red, just normal red. Gonna make the uh, like a four color gradient. Gonna twist this backwards to remove it, and just put some red in the back. I mean, you could be more careful with your paint job and not hit other things, but I'm a sloppy painter, so actually I I paint really fast in a rush and. I don't like putting a project away and then coming back to it. And so I, I don't mind touching the uh, little details. Decided to do the bottom also in a fade. It's a good way of practicing. If it's your first time doing a fade, you could practice at the bottom of the car first and then do the body. I mean, you could learn a lot just by practicing a few things if you want under the under the car if you want to practice uh, battle damage or or anything really like sut a lot of 
burnt, whatever you want, just practice under the cars. Um, so that looks that looks like a pretty cool fade. Not perfect, but it works. Now, once you've done the body of the car, I like to go into the silver and just paint all my accessories, all my guns and everything that's on the vehicle. And um, these guns have a lot of details on them. If you do order them and you'll see that there's, there's quite a bit of detail on them. I don't bother with painting the details. Maybe I should, but I mean, if, if you're a detail oriented person, um, there's a lot of details on these guns that are fun to paint. So, but I'm just going to paint them silver and dirty them up. Now with, with the same silver brush that I used to paint all of that and knowing that there's not a lot of silver on the actual brush, you could go along the edges and chip off paint. You're basically painting silver on the edges, but it looks like chipped off paint. I'll show you here in the back bump, bumper here. Just on whatever you see that are like corners or edges or extrusions, you could just pass the brush a little bit and just chip off some paint and give it some damage. It's the easiest method I find to make something look older than it is. It's also hard to see on the camera because it's it's a reflective color, so it's it's much nicer in person, but when when I move the model around, when I move the car around, you can actually see the the edges that are damaged because of the reflections. Put some over here. I mean, if you want it really damaged, you could put more silver if you want. Um, this is just the first part of damaging. There's a second part to damaging the silver. Uh, it's, it's putting brushed metal on top of the silver painted chips that you put. So over here I'm still doing the silver, but I'll show you after when I use brushed metal to add to that silver. It's going to make a really nice look. Again, very light paint on the brush here, just dry brushing. It works really well on, on yellow. I love, I love doing this method on yellow. It's like, reminds me of my days when I used to play with Tonka trucks and the yellow would get like super old or you left it in your backyard and it would rain and it would be that yellow rusted damaged metal look. So this is just with silver. I'm going to put some here in the bottom. You can even put some between the cracks of where maybe a door would open or something. And this is the brushed metal I'm talking about. It's uh, it's for sale at Walmart, if you want to get that. And don't want to put too much. You want to put a bit on your brush and then remove some from your brush. Not too much. You don't want to remove too much because the brushed metal is a nice little look. If you have quite a bit on it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually do... Uh, a nice shine, a nice glimmer of newly damaged metal. I forgot to put some in the back here with the silver, so I'm just going to put brushed metal in the back. And see how it's making that plate of metal there look more damaged. Here, I'll show you this on the front plate of metal. A little Kellogg's gift card looks like 
nice piece of metal now, doesn't it? And that's just two colors, silver and brushed metal. It gives a nice, uh, a nice look to the skulls too. Makes them pop out. It's dry brush on top there. You need probably rams a lot with that thing, right? So there wouldn't be a lot of paint on it. That looks uh, pretty good. Now, if you want, you have some leftovers. You could put it on your guns. Um, you could put it on the at the end of tailpipes. Uh, you could put it uh, where your rockets shoot out of because you know that's that's fire, right? That comes out of those rockets in the back, so it burns everything. Um, put it at the end of guns or muzzles. You know, wherever you think when you shoot a gun, where fire would be. Put some of that brushed metal there. Gives a nice little touch of, of detail. You can use it to dirty up something if it's too clean. Yeah, there's probably some fire that comes out of there when you're shooting bullets, so that's probably going to burn up a little bit. There's ways of using blue and purple to make like metal look really hot and on fire. Don't forget to take a break. Eat the uh, traditional pastries that your friend brings you on, on game nights or take some tea in, in your favorite mug. Make sure that that's also available. Stay fed, stay hydrated while you're doing six hours of painting. Now for the tip of the missiles here, I'm just going to use a toothpick and some red and just put a little bit of paint on it and the paint is going to slide down and cover the missile if you put enough. So don't be scared of putting a lot of uh, paint on your... Well, that looks pretty good. And um, so my, my friend, uh, he does, what are they called, Gundams when he comes over. And while I'm painting these, these cars and stuff, he's, he's sitting across from me and he's building Gundams and stuff. And um, he has this thing called, I'm just putting rust here, guys, by the way. I've done this in 10 million videos. You, you know how it's done by now. Just put rust from Army Painter and just put it wherever you want. Um, usually on top of the silver and stuff. But back to my Gundam story. He um, he has this thing, or I, I think it's maybe a Gundam community thing, and it's called um, Weapon Fatigue. So when you're building these models, depending on the grade or how, how, my, how detailed they are, but some of them are really detailed, and as you're building these, by the time you get to the, to the weapons, your brain is physically fatigued. You're, you're, uh, maybe your hands or your arms are probably even like physically fatigued but um, yeah so he gets to that point and he's like man I'm I'm weapon fatigued right now I don't want to do these weapons and he just throws them back in the box and at home he's got he's got a bunch of uh, Gundams that that are weaponless so they're basically just giant robots but he he eventually makes the weapons and, and they look really cool they look they look uh, pretty badass actually um, so here I'm using a toothpick to do my uh, my rust again. Something uh, pretty easy to do. Just put a bit of that. It comes uh, it comes really bright, but it dries dark, so don't worry about it. And then if you want, you could even add uh, like a brown or um, just straight up rust color on top of the orange. So that's gonna darken it up a little. It's gonna give you a two-tone rust which is more realistic than just a one-tone color um, so yeah if, you, if ever you want to do something a bit more realistic or want to spend a bit more time on on the damage it's always best to use at least two colors um, for for any damage or rust that you're doing 
And uh, oh yeah, and back to the uh, the weapon fatigue. I, I knew I knew I was going somewhere with that. I I get what's called I don't know if you guys get this, but I get what's called tire fatigue. When it comes time to make the tires and the eggs, I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to do this, but I don't want to stop either. So it's because it's so relaxing, right? You guys know this painting is just relaxing. It's zen. You guys are probably relaxed right now just watching this. Hopefully, I mean that's my intentions here. Um, but yeah, so I get I get wheel fatigue and tire fatigue, but you know I persevere, make the mags uh, brushed metal, and I'm gonna use black on the tires. My method is slow AF. It's really slow. This is how I do it. If you guys have a better way of painting the tires, um, I know a lot of you are gonna say just paint them when they're not there. And that that would probably be easier, but this this model had a gave me a really hard time getting the tires out, and I just gave up and I just left them there. So this is how I'm painting them, and now you can see why I have wheel fatigue, tire fatigue. But you know, eventually I get them done, and uh, they look they look nice. They look nice and clean. I'm gonna use the leftover black that I have on my brush and. Maybe dirty up the back over here, the back bumper or the bottom, right? All the bottom here. Uh, he sets cars on fire. He sets people on fire. Not people. It's, it's a bit aggressive. He sets things on fire. He sets other cars on fire. And, uh, you know, maybe he runs them over and whatever. And, and they're still on fire. So the, the bottom of this truck should be a bit burnt, you know, have a bit of uh, a bit of that black charcoal look at the bottom here and um, in the front the bottom is is amazing to do also um, gonna clean up these tires again man I really don't like doing tires look at this it's so annoying little dots of white appearing from where anyways uh, yeah you could use your dry brush of black and just dirty up the bottom of the uh, of your car too super easy and it makes all the details like come out like stick out a little bit much uh, much more dirty a little bit more realistic there some dirt a uh, few people ask me how long does it take me to do these and I'd say five to six hours about and that's when I'm trying to work on them fast so that's it I hope you learned something from this video, or I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you just chilled out and relaxed while I was talking. Um, if you're looking for dice or guns for your cars, uh, I have an Etsy page, I have even engines and stuff like that. Uh, I'm getting gates now and templates and a bunch of other things that are really cool. So go check out my Etsy page in the description. And uh, we also have a contest going on right now on the Facebook page. So go check that out. Uh, you don't have to be a pro. To enter it's a random draw so any purple or blue car will do uh, so get ch go check that out and you could win a uh, container full of bikes this month thanks for watching subscribe tell your friends about gas science tv and i'll see you next time